Let's look at simplifying some radicals in fractions. Remember we have that property that allows us to write this as a radical over a radical. When we do this, we're able to see that the denominators are both perfect squares and we can evaluate them. Now we can just write these as fractions over a common denominator. We know the common denominator for question one is going to be eight. And in the first term, root three is already written over eight. The second term, I know that I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by two to give me a common denominator of eight. So we have plus two root three. We can simplify the numerator. They're like radicals. One root three plus two root three gives us three root three all over eight. Let's try question two. We have the same kind of question. We can write these as a radical over a radical. Again, we were able to see that we have a perfect square in the denominator, so we could evaluate each of those. And now we just again want to write our fractions over the lowest common multiple of the denominators. In this case, that's going to be six. The second term is already written over six. We need to multiply the first term by two over two. So now we have two root five plus root five all over six. When we simplify the numerator, that gives us three root five all over six. We see, of course, that we can simplify that fraction. The numbers outside of the radical sign are both divisible by three. This question simplifies to one root five or just root five all over two. Here are two questions. Why don't you first of all pause your video and do question three. We see again we had perfect squares in the denominator. You were able to simplify each of those. The lowest common multiple of the denominator for this question was nine. We had to multiply the first term by three over three, giving us three root seven plus root seven all over nine, and a final answer of four root seven over nine. If you haven't already done so, pause your video and finish question four. Again, we have perfect squares in the denominator. We simplified each of those. This time, the lowest common multiple of the denominators wasn't an existing denominator. The lowest common multiple of four and six is, of course, 12. We had to multiply our first term by three over three and our second term by two over two, giving us three root 11 plus two root 11 all over 12. This simplified to five root 11 over 12. These are good test questions, good exam questions. They show that you know how to work with radicals and fractions. So make sure you practice these. Oh, what's going on here? Let's get rid of that. Now we want to talk about adding and subtracting with roots other than square roots. These examples are all with cube roots. Remember we said they have to combine like radicals and like radicals mean that you have the same radicand, the stuff inside, the radicand is all the same here, and the same index. These all have the same index as well. So these are like radicals. When you have like radicals, you can keep the like radical and add and subtract the coefficients. One plus four is five minus two. This adds to three times the cube root of 18. Pause your video and do question two. Again, you have like radicals. So we kept the cube root of 20. When we combine the coefficients, we finish with three times the cube root of 20. Now you should be asking yourself, can I simplify 
these cube roots. Well, let's look at the cube root of 18. If we prime factor that, remember that the index tells us that we're looking for three factors that are the same. I don't have three factors that are the same. This can't be simplified any further. This is done. What about the cube root of 20? We're still looking for three factors that are the same. I don't have three that are the same. So again, it can't be simplified any further. Now, questions three and four are similar to those last square roots that we were adding, where you needed to simplify each radical before you could find like radicals. Let's do that here. The first thing we want to do is prime factor each of those. Remember, we need to look at the index. And the index for each of these tells us we're looking for three factors that are the same. So in the first term, I have three twos that we can take out. So this is negative 2 times 2, but we still have the cube root of 2 left. Again, we have three twos we can take out. And we have now the cube root of three left. We're taking all of these twos out. So this is three times two. But of course, I'm hoping you knew that the cube root of eight was equal to two. That's one of those facts I asked you to memorize earlier, in which case you wouldn't need to prime factor and do that work. So if we simplify this now, we see we have negative two times two, so negative four times the cube root of two, minus two times the cube root of three, plus six. Nothing else to simplify here. We don't have like radicals, and so we're done. Why don't you pause your video and prime factor the radicals for question four. We still have an index of three. That means we're looking for three factors that are the same. In the first term, I see three factors of two I can take out. So this is three times two or six times the cube root of three. In the second term, again, there are three factors of three I can take out. So now I have plus two times three, which is six, leaving the cube root of three. And in the last term, I have three factors of two and three factors of five. Two times five is 10. And then there's still a cube root of three. This time I do have like radicals. They are all terms with the cube root of three. So I can keep that cube root of three and add the coefficients. Six plus six is 12, minus 10 is two. Here are two questions for you to try. Pause your video, do the adding and subtracting. So we prime factored everything. We saw the first term had three factors of three we could take out. Three times five gave us 15. The second term had three factors of two to take out. Two times two gave us four. And the final term had three factors of two and three factors of five. Two times five gave us the 10. These were all like radicals, and so we could combine them to give us 21 times the cube root of two. Now pause your video, do question four, but be careful. The index here is four. We're looking at fourth roots. That means we need four factors that are the same. Let's take a look at question six. When we prime factored 16, we saw that there are four factors of two. And because our index is four, we're going to take them all out. Two times three gives us six. And there's nothing left inside of the radical sign. 
when we prime factor 80, again, we found four factors of two. We can take those all out. Two times two gives us four, and there's the fourth root of five left. In the last term, we have four factors of five that can be taken out. So we have eight left inside the radical sign. These are not like radicals and cannot be combined any further. This is your answer for this question. Make sure again you go and practice these before you move on to the next lecture.